Yo, what's up guys? I'm Charis and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be doing a farming run guide. We're going to be looking at every relevant patch in the game, any item, quest or unlock that will make your farm runs better, and we're going to be looking at both money making runs and experience runs. I tried to include everything to make the farm runs as efficient as possible, so make sure to leave a comment if I miss something and I'll pin it to the top of the comment so that other people can see it. If you want to skip over all of the info and you just want to see how to do the farm runs assuming you have everything you need, make sure you click the timestamps in the description that will take you to both the money making and the experience farm runs. So without further ado, let's get into the guide. To start things off, let's look at the requirements and the only thing you absolutely need to start doing farm runs is 38 farming so that you can do Toad Flex, which is actually a really good herb for money making. On this guide, instead of requirements, we're going to have a bunch of recommended things that will improve your farm runs and you can upgrade them as you go. I divided the recommendations by patch, so we're going to look at all of the, the type of patches, but first we're going to look at the general recommendations which will help you no matter what you're doing. The Fairy Tale Part 1 quest will give you Magic Sacketers as a reward, which I recommend you put on your tool build, and this will give you 10% yield on anything you harvest. The Scroll of Life is a Dungeoneering reward which you can get for 10,000 Dungeoneering tokens once you hit level 25 Dungeoneering. What it does is that it has a chance of saving seeds whenever you're harvesting. It can really save you a lot of money on the more expensive seeds. The Master Farmer outfit is an outfit that you can make once you hit 80 farming and 20 invention. The way you make it is by unlocking the blueprint from player owned farms and gathering fragments that you will get by farming starting at level 70 farming. It can take a while to get since you have to make three different farming outfits and then combine them and every outfit piece takes 3600 fragments to make. So in total it takes 54,000 fragments to make the outfit but don't worry if you don't have it just use whatever outfit you do have. Along with other benefits you will get more harvest, more XP, your flower, herb and allotment patches will be auto water and the herbs you collect will be auto clean so those are more expensive and it is a really nice bonus. Overall, as with any elite outfit, this is a really good thing to shoot for. We also have the Trinome Village quest, which unlocks the Spirit Tree network, and that will just help you teleport around to the patches. Next up, we have the legendary Greenfinger Sora, which has a 15% chance to give you extra crops, and it costs 230,000 loyalty points. If you can't buy the legendary version, just get the highest one that you can with loyalty points. The 99 and 120 farming cape both have useful perks. The 99 one is that you can have a chance to insta gather all of your crops and they'll just go noted into your inventory. And for the 120 farming cape, it will automatically super compost all of your patches. The super compost just means you get more out of your crops and they have a lower chance of dying. Next up, we have bladed dive and mobile perk, and these just help you move around easier whenever you're doing your farm runs. Before we get into each specific patch, we want to take a look at the two leprechaun. You can find these on any patch and they are really useful. You can note any produce just by using it on the leprechaun and they can store and automatically use your super compost just in case you don't have the 120 farming cape. To have them use your compost for you, you wanna right click them, hit compost and then choose which one you wanna do and they are gonna charge you 1500 per super compost or 2500 for ultra compost. Then all you do is right click exchange and then just give them all the compost you want now let's look at all the different patches starting with herbs. Herbs are the main source of money in money making runs so you do want to do as many of these as you can. Herb patches usually come with flower and allotment patches as well so we're just going to group those together. The first one is the south of flower patch and the easiest way to get here is to cabbage port using your explorer's ring 3. Next we have Mauritania and you can teleport here 3 times a day using your master farmer hat. Other than that you can use your ectophile and then just run west. The next one is Catherby, and for this one you just want to teleport to the Lowstone in Catherby. You could also use your Botanist Mask to teleport directly here three times a day. The Mineral Farm Teleport is the last one that has flower and allotment patches as well, and you can get here by using your Teleport, which you unlock after you complete the Ardoin Task Medium, or you could also use the Ardoin Lodestone. The Troll Stronghold Patch requires My Arms Big Adventure, and to get here you want to use the Trollheim Teleport from the Lunar Spells, which you unlock from Livid Farm. Or you can use the regular Trollheim teleport, but this is a really long run. Since this teleport isn't as straightforward as the rest, here's how you get to it if you do decide to use the regular Trollheim teleport. It takes about a minute to get to the herb patch, and it might not seem like a lot, but when you're teleporting to every patch and getting there in a couple of seconds, this is a really long run. 
The next herb patch is in the Cruise district, and this is just a herb patch, although there is a bush patch next to it, which we'll talk about later. And to get here, you just want to use your teleport seed to Cruise, and you will be right next to the patch. The final herb patch is in the wilderness, and this is the only patch that can grow bloodweed, although right now it's not the best to do. You can get here by using the wilderness sword one teleport, and I usually avoid this patch just because I don't want to bank everything before I go here, and I don't want to risk my stuff. So all in all, what do you need to efficiently do herb runs? You need the Explorer's Ring 3 at least for the Cabbage Port, you need the Ectophile, Arden Cloak 2 for the Farm Teleport, and the Wilderness Sword 1. You need Lunar Diplomacy and to unlock the Trollham Teleport spell from Libet Farm to get directly to the patch. Then the Attuned Crystal Seed which you can make using 4000 Harmonic Dusk and a regular Crystal te Teleport Seed. This will just make it so that you have infinite charges on your seed. A 99 magic cape is really nice so that you can swap spellbooks at a bank and you can use your Trollheim teleport spell. And finally, my arms big adventure to unlock the Trollheim patch, Plague Sand to unlock the Cruise patch, and 81 archaeology along with a farm ecology relic, which will just make it so that your herbs never die. So now that you have everything, which herbs should you be farming? At level 38, you should do Toad Flax, then 73 Lantodime, and 79 Dwarfweed. These are by far the most profitable herbs. As for flowers, you can do marigolds from level 2 and then limpwood roots from level 26 onward. Although, once you're at a higher level, you unlock the ability to get 5 marigolds from every patch and at this point it becomes more profitable to go back to marigolds. As for allotments, it really doesn't matter which ones you do. All that matters is that you do it with a harvest potion which just gives you different items that are a little bit more expensive. These are a little bit trickier to sell and if you insta sell them you won't profit as much so if you want to see how to really profit from these I have a guide on how to use them just click on the top right of your screen right now. Pushes can be done for both XP and GP depending on how you do them because you don't actually have to replant the bush every time you want to harvest it. You can just wait and the fruit will grow back. So if you want XP you can just clear them and plant them again and then check them for XP or if you want money you can just harvest the crops and just leave them there and they will grow back. The first bush patch is next to the champion's guild and the easiest way to get here is using a combat bracelet teleport from the ch to the champion's guild or you can also use the Varrock lodestone which is not too far away. For the Roomington patch the easiest way to get here is to use a house tablet which is chipped to Roomington or you can also use the Portorum lodestone but again that is a relatively long run. There is another patch south of Ardoin and the quickest way to get here is by using your teleport that you unlock after you complete the Ardoin tasks easy or you can also use the battlefield spirit tree but that is a little bit farther away. The fourth bush, bush patch is in Etzeria and to get here you want to plant a spirit tree next to the castle, wait for it to grow and then you have that spot unlocked. You can also use the enchanted liar teleport if you don't want to go through the trouble of planting a spirit tree. And the final bush patch is, like I said before, in the Cruise district and again for this one you just want to use your attuned crystal teleport seed to get here. To do the bushes efficiently you want to have a spirit tree in Manor Farm which is really accessible and will let you teleport to Etzeria really quickly. Or you can also use a rerouter which is an invention item which is basically a portable spirit tree so you can have it in your inventory. Then you want your Dawn Clock 1 for that monastery teleport. You want a Passage of the Abyss or a Combat Bracelet to teleport directly there and you want uh, the love story quest and 77 magic to be able to chip your house tablets into Remington. Once you have all of this you can do your bushes efficiently and the ones you want to do are avocado at 99, mango at 105, a lychee at 111 and again like I said if you want XP clear the bush and plant another one if you want GP just collect the crops and leave it to grow again. There are only two mushroom patches and these are really worth it for money since they sell for a lot and they also have a chance to spawn a Zygomite that you can sell as well. The first one is in Mauritania and you can get to it using the fairy code CKS or using the Canifus Lodestone. The next patch is in Tehran 1 and you can teleport directly here using the Tehran 1 Quiver 2 or again use the Lodestone and run to the patch. To do mushrooms effectively you want to complete the elven tasks hard which unlock the mushroom patch and give you the turning wind quiver to teleport directly there. Also the Mauritania task set medium makes the Mauritania mushroom patch this is free which means it can't die and the elite tasks double the harvest on all of the mushrooms so that's a really good one to have as well. As for what to farm you want to do bitter cap mushrooms at level 53, mushroom mushrooms at level 74 and tom shrooms at level 109. These are all really good for money so you can choose the one that is the most money at the time that you're doing this. 
There are three cactus patches and these are good both for money and XP depending on what you're planting. The first patch is an Alcarid and the easiest way to get here by far is just using the Alcarid lodestone. The next patch requires the Jack of Spades quest since it is in Menaphos and you also have to mine the patch and give 12 Arcadia logs to the person watching the patch in order to be able to use it. To get here you can use an Imperial District Teleport Tablet or you can also use the Menaphos lodestone. The final cactus patch is an Anachronia, which obviously requires you to be able to get two Anachronia to use. This one also requires you to mine it and give 12 magic logs to the person watching the patch in order to be able to use it. The only reliable way to get here is using a Totem of the Abyss to teleport directly there using the Anachronia teleport, since the Totem is right next to it. If you don't have the Totem of the Abyss, don't even bother with this patch since it's way too far out of the way. To do cactus patches efficiently, you want to have the Desert Amulet 3, since completing these hard tasks from the desert will make both the Alcarid and the Menaphos cactus patches disease free. And finally, a giant and familiar has a 50% chance of doubling the harvest. As for what to plant, you want to do Potato Cactus at level 86 and Dragon Fruit at level 95. These are both good for money. And at level 116, you can do Golden Dragon Fruit, which is better for XP. Now we're going to move into trees and fruit trees afterwards. These are the main way to get XP while doing farm runs. The first tree patch is in Lumbridge and you want to use a Lumbridge teleport tablet or the Lumbridge lodestone to get to it. Next one is in the Varrock Palace and just as Lumbridge you want to use the Varrock teleport tablet or the Varrock lodestone. Patch number three is in Falador and you guessed it, you can use a Falador teleport tablet or the Falador lodestone. Patch number 4 is in Taverly and once again you can use the Taverly House Teleport Tablet which I don't recommend doing since the Lodestone is just right next to it. On the others the, the tablet is better, for this one probably use the Lodestone. Next up is the Gnome Stronghold which will require the Tree Gnome Village Quest and the easiest way to get here is just to use the Spirit Tree. The next tree patch is in Prifteness in the Traherne District and again anything in Prifteness the easiest way to get here is using your Crystal Teleport Seed. As for things you need to do trees effectively, you want an attuned crystal teleport seed in order to have unlimited teleports to Traherne. You also want the desert treasure and the light within quests. These quests unlock the rapid growth spell which you can use on every tree patch once per day to make it skip one stage. Trees can only die in between growth stages so what this means is that you basically have a lower chance of your tree dying. Using this on the tree pretty much means it is worth it to not pay the farmer to protect your tree, saving you some money as well as some time. And finally, once again, you want a spirit tree in Manor Farm or a rerouter in order to get to the spirit tree network as fast as possible. Since you're only doing trees for XP, it is worth it to just do the highest level one you can. That is Maple Tree at level 45, Yew Tree at level 60 and Magic Tree from 75 all the way to 120. Moving on to fruit trees, which is the other thing you want to be doing for XP and the first one is in the Gnome Stronghold and like before the easiest way to get here is with a spirit tree. The next one is next to the Tree Gnome Village and to get here you want to use the Gnome Glider or the spirit tree into the Tree Gnome Village and then follow Elkoi out of the maze. Next patch is in Brimhaven and you can get here with a charter boat or you can also plant a spirit tree pretty close to it and teleport to it. Patch number 4 is in Catherby and you can get here just by using the Catherby Lodestone. The next one is in Letia and you can get here using the Tyrion Wind Quiver 1 or the, your Crystal Teleport Seed. Patch number 6 is in Herbler Habitat and to get here you want to use your Master Farmer Hat when you have Juju Spirit Bags in your bank. You can use them directly from your bank if you have the hat. You can also use the Juju Spirit Bag in your inventory or you can use the Witch Doctor Mask. And finally we have the Fruit Tree Patch in the Mailer District of Prifteness and once again you can get here with your crystal teleport seed and you can see how good the attuned version of this item is since it won't run out of charges and we've used it a bunch of times in this guide. As for what you need to do these efficiently you want your attuned crystal teleport seed, you want the quest prisoner of Glufri since you want to have that glider to the tree gnome village, you want a spirit tree in manor farm or a rerouter once again a giant unfamiliar from her harvest and once again desert treasure and the light within to get that rapid growth spell and skip that one stage for every tree. As with the regular trees, for the fruit trees you just want to plant the highest level one you can, although you might want to take how much money it is costing you into account. From level 57 you want to do papaya trees, from level 68 palm trees, 
101 you want to switch to Siku Tree, then 107 Guarana Tree, and finally at 113 you want to be doing a Carambola Tree. The last two patches that I want to talk about are Elder Tree and Crystal Tree. These are both used for XP and the Elder Tree works just as any other tree. You can buy the seed, plant it in a pot and then put it in the patch and wait for it to grow. As for the crystal tree, it's a little bit more complicated because you need to get a crystal acorn, which is untradeable and is a rare drop from most of the things in Prifteness. And you can also get one the first time you enter the max guild. So you get one for free once you max. And if you have 99 farming and you're going to, to for 120, this could be really useful. You can plant it in Prifteness next to the lodestone, right next to the grand exchange as well. And you can harvest it once per day for a free 14,000 XP. Now let's move into the equipment you want to bring every time you're doing a farm run, starting with a master farmer outfit. Like I said before, it has great benefits, a lot, a lot of perks, and you want to bring this if you have it. Then your farming cape, whether it's 99 or 120. I have a turn wind quiver 4, and you can just bring the 3 one if you have it. Then dual wield melee for bladed dive, along with an enhanced Excalibur with mobile. This just lets me bladed dive and search faster, or more often, I should say. Then you want a portent of the abyss for the combat bracelet teleport and a, finally a grace of the elves and luck of the dwarves just in case you get a seren spirit now we're going to move on to the farm runs both money making and for xp done as efficiently as possible i just want to point out that the whole point of talking about every patch and how to do it efficiently was so that you guys can mix and match to make your own farm run however you want to do it and if you skip all the way here from the beginning, I do recommend going back and looking at the past section of the guide so that you can make your own farm run to fit your own needs. Anyway, moving on to the first farm run, which is a money run. And this is my inventory setup. I have farming urns along with an enhancer in order to get more XP, although this is not really necessary because the money runs don't really give that much XP. I have a rune pouch with the runes for the Trollheim teleport in the Lunar Spellbook. Then we have allotment, marigold and herb seeds, an ectophile, a tuned crystal teleport seed and explorer's ring for teleports along with a Remington house tablet. A one dose juju potion and harvest potion. You know the harvest potion turns those crops into better ones and the juju potion just gives you more harvest. And finally a Wolpertinger familiar which doubles your harvest from bushes. The method I do on my money making runs is the following. I homeport to Catherby, run to the patch, Turn on my green fingers aura and sip my harvest potion and juju farming potion. Then I harvest the herb patch and the allotment patch using all of the crops on the two leprechaun in order to note them. And then finally harvest the marigolds and then use my hat to teleport to the Mauritania patch. If I've already used my three teleports I'll use my ectophile and run to the patch. At the patch I do the marigolds first this time since I already have some in my inventory, use them on the two leprechaun and then harvest the allotment and the herb patch. From there I use my cabbage port on the explorer's ring to go to the south of Falador patch. Same thing there, I'll do the allotment and herbs first, then I'll do the marigold to have them in my inventory and then teleport to the farm and then in the farm I'll start with the marigolds and then do the herb and the allotment. From there I use my Lunar Spellbook to go to Trollheim and harvest that herb. And then I'll use the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed to go to the Cruis District. In the Cruis District I can harvest the herb and the bush. For the money making ones I won't clear the bush, I'll just harvest it and leave it there. Then I'll teleport using the Rimlet and I'll go to that bush. And after I harvest it I'll teleport using the Portent of the Abyss to the Champions Guild. From there you can use your teleport to the monastery and then finally you can teleport to your farm and use your spirit tree there to go to its area and get the final bush. I don't bother with cactus or mushrooms on my regular runs since they just take up too much inventory space. But from here you could definitely just bank, get the seeds for the mushrooms and the cactus and then go do those as well. As for how much money you can expect, here's a screenshot of just one of my random farmings that I did and I got almost 1.5 mil GP. It takes me about 7 minutes to complete one of these, so that means I, if you do 1.4 mil every run and it takes you 7 minutes, you're effectively making 12 mil GP an hour. Herbs take about 80 minutes to grow, so you can do them about every 1 hour and a half. If you just get used to doing these on your downtime, you'll be making a lot of money without even knowing it. Next up is the experience run and here's the setup to do it the most efficiently. 
I have urns and an urn enhancer. This time it really is worth it to bring it since you will be getting a lot more XP from it. Then I have six tree saplings, be that you, magic, or willow, or whatever you're doing. Seven fruit tree saplings. I think in this case I have palm tree seeds. Then you need one elder tree sapling. Teleport tablets to Fodor, Lumbridge, and Varrock. Then a giant end familiar and a tuned crystal teleport seed. I have two rune pouches with nature, soul, earth, and water runes. This will let me cast rapid growth and the anachronia teleport. Finally, I have bush seeds, cactus seeds, a 99 magic cape in order to swap my spell book, and I'm wearing a grace of the elves, and I have the max guild garden portal set to overgrown idols, and you'll see why in just a second. For experience runs, the first thing you want to do are regular trees since you want to clear up inventory space so that you can harvest your fruit trees. So here I'm going to use my Atune Teleport Crystal Seed. I'm going to go to Traherne, check the hell, clear the tree, and then plant the new tree and use Rapid Growth on it. From there, I'm going to go to Farrakh and do the same, then Lumbridge and Falador, and that will clear all the teleports out of my inventory. From there, I go to Taverly and go to the tree right north of the Lodestone. And once that tree is done, I use my tree rerouter in order to go to the tree gnome stronghold. From there, you can go east to your first fruit tree and then run southwest to do your last regular tree. From there, I use a teleport to overgrown idols on my Grace of the Elves, which is why we attuned the max guild garden portal to overgrown idols before. And then you can run east and use the gnome glider that is there to go to the tree gnome village patch. From the Trinum village, you want to use your home port or lodestone to Catherby and get the tree to the east of the lodestone. And then you can either lodestone back or just run back to charter a boat to Brimhaven. From Brimhaven, I'm going to use my master farmer hat to teleport to Herbler Habitat and run south to get that fruit tree. Then once again, I'm going to use my Atune Crystal Teleport Seed to go to Letia, which is option number one. and then. Once I get that tree, once again, I tune Crystal Teleport Seed to the Mailer District in Prithiness. At this point, I've done all of my regular trees and all of my fruit trees, so I'm going to teleport to the Cruis District using the seed once again and get that Elder Tree. From the Elder Tree, you can run west and get the Bush Patch that is next to the Herb Patch that we saw before. From that Bush Patch, I'm going to go to the Champions Guild using my Portent of the Abyss and get the Bush Patch there and then go to the monastery and get that one bush patch as well. Remember this time you are clearing the bush patch since you do want to get XP from checking the health on it. Then I use my spirit tree rerouter once again to go to Etzeria and get that one bush patch as well. And then we move on to the cactus. Even though I still have one bush patch left, that is because I forgot the Remington teleport tablet. So we are going to teleport to Alcarid using the low zone and run northeast for that cactus. Once again, remember, if you're doing this for XP, you want to clear the cactus and plant a new one. From there, I'm going to lodestone to Manaphos and go to the Imperial District and get the cactus there. From there, I'm going to go to a bank, which in this case is a Max Guild, and switch my spell book. Since I'm already at a bank, I'm going to grab a Remington Teleport Tablet to go to that one bush patch. And finally, from there, I'm going to use the Anachronia Teleport. In this case, when I tried to go to it, my totem wasn't activated. So for the purpose of this video, I just went to it, activated it, and went back to the bush so I could teleport back to the totem. But make sure you keep that totem off and running so that you can teleport to it whenever you need. Once you check that cactus bush near the totem of the abyss, you're going to do one final teleport to the Prifteness Lodestone and harvest the crystal tree. So how much experience can you expect using this experience run? Well, for 6 magic trees, you get 82,000 XP, 7 current baller tree means 2,070 XP, 5 lychee is 45 XP, 3 dra golden dragon fruit is 82k XP, 1 elder tree is 23k XP, and finally, the crystal tree harvest is 14k XP. This is assuming you're doing the highest level trees and that none of your trees die, which is regularly not the case, so take this with a grain of salt. This is also why I didn't add any boosts so that it kind of evens out with your trees dying and the boost that you have. But without any boost, you would get 517k XP per run. And every run takes about 10 minutes, which means you're effectively getting 3.1 million XP per hour. Also, some trees take more time to grow than others. So what I would do is two runs a day. One is a full run with everything on here. And then another one would be one where you're not doing fruit trees 
elder seeds or crystal tree harvests. This is still effectively the most efficient way to train farming and to get to level 120 if you are going for that. Anyways guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped you make your own farm runs. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if I miss something, make sure to leave a comment so I can pin it and other people can see it as well. If you wanna watch more of my videos, you can click on screen now to go to my channel or go to my playlist or go to my most recent video. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.